The Tarkov wipe is finally upon us. Whether it's your second or fifth wipe, these tips will help you get ahead of the pack in Tarkov's early wipe. It's honestly crazy that I haven't wiped since last December. I don't really know if I'm doing this the right way. Can someone please- Quick disclaimer, all the information I'm about to share with you is subject to change because we haven't actually seen what this next wipe is going to be like. The absolute first thing that you're going to want to do is unlock Jaeger. You can unlock the quest to do this once you hit level 2. So you can either hop into customs and start working on your scav kills or examine all the items traders sell. If you examine all the items that traders sell, you'll be able to get to level 2 without even entering a raid. Doing this lets you go woods for your first raid and unlock Jaeger immediately. It's smart to do this first and avoid customs because customs is just going to be a PvP nightmare right away. You want to unlock Jaeger as fast as possible because this will give you access to buying the MP133 shotgun. You're going to need a total of three of these shotguns, two for Prapper's Quest debut and one for the Mechanic Quest Gunsmith. A lot of people use this strategy, so that's why it's important to get Jaeger as fast as possible because otherwise these shotguns are going to sell out practically immediately when he resets. Another strategy to use early wipe is to avoid customs completely at the beginning. You can go to reserve woods and interchange to get a lot of your quest items and barter items and stuff you need to upgrade your hideout. By going there first, you beat a lot of the chads who are just trying to power level and get through their early quests on customs. These locations will probably be a lot less contested than later in the wipe. Next, I highly recommend taking advantage of your scav. Because your cooldown timer is considerably longer with a fresh account, you should play it whenever you get the chance. You can use your scav to get items for your hideout on interchange or find saluas and other med items on shoreline. Also hold on to your hemostats because you'll use those to craft saluas in your hideout. Another important thing to do is always be looking ahead. If you're not a seasoned vet, I recommend looking up every item on the Tarkov wiki before you sell it. I've had countless experiences where I sell an item I need for a quest or upgrade down the road and then they magically vanish from all my raids. Plan ahead so you don't end up hitting your head against a wall because you actually needed that optimaloscope you sold on the flea market. My next piece of advice is to get ahead on the economy. Knowing what items will and won't fluctuate in price throughout the wipe makes a massive amount of difference in the money you'll be making. One important thing to do is to buy as much sugar as humanly possible. There's a barter trade for a cooler from Jaeger so this is a great way to store your sugar. Sugar sells for around 20k at the beginning of a wipe but then spikes to about 80 or 100,000. Sugar is primarily used for the booze generator and a few barter trades. Moonshine sells for over 300k a bottle early wipe, so getting ahead on this will be a massive earning for your passive income. Last wipe I used a similar tactic with buying PSUs early to get my Bitcoin farm up and running, but I'm not sure if that's going to be a viable strategy this wipe. Bitcoin's price plummeted last wipe, and I assume the market won't have a huge rebound during this wipe. I can imagine Bitcoins will only be selling for around 100 to 150,000, so you might be wasting stash space by holding on to 10 PSUs. Although it takes an ungodly amount of corrugated hoses to build the booze generator, I anticipate it's going to be the most efficient way to make passive income this wipe. Next I want to talk about skill leveling. If you hit the ground running with the goal of min-maxing your skill levels, you'll start with a big advantage over the other players. The first thing you're going to want to do is sprint out your entire stamina bar right when you get into a raid. Don't stop, don't jump, don't run into a bush. You're going to want to do this because this helps you cheese the diminishing returns aspect of the skill leveling system. This also works with strength, so once you see that your character's overweight, run out the entire stamina bar again. I also recommend doing things like packing your mag and eating in every raid. If you eat everything you find in a raid, this will help you boost your metabolism skill. You can further boost your metabolism skill by using gold and stars. Hideout management and crafting are two other skills that you should focus on. Hideout management is leveled through crafting items in your hideout as well as having the gas, water filter, and air filter running. Hideout management is arguably one of the most overlooked skills in Tarkov, but it's a massive benefit for you. Upgrading the skill provides bonus multipliers to things like the library, air filter, and intel center. For example, if your hideout management skill is level 1, when you turn on the air filter, you receive a 40% bonus to your physical skill leveling. But if your hideout management skill is leveled, you'll receive a boost to this percentage. Last wipe, my air filter was giving me about a 60% bonus by the end of the wipe. This helped me reach max endurance and strength at a much faster rate than normal. These bonuses not only impact your skill leveling, but also boost money earned from quests and XP received in raid. These bonuses not only impact your skill leveling, but also boost the money you earn from quests and the XP you receive from a raid. Your crafting skill is leveled by crafting things in the hideout. You gain one point per item you craft, but that's only if you alternate your crafts. If you craft two of the same things back to back, you won't level your skill once that craft is done. You want to switch off your crafts so you're leveling this skill. Upgrading your crafting skill decreases the time it takes to craft, so this is a huge bonus when you're crafting things that take a long time, like stuff in the intel center. 
A great way to quickly level your crafting skills by crafting filters in the hideout. All it takes is a gas mask and two minutes to craft this filter. This is by far the fastest craft that you can do in the game. It's awesome to mix in between different crafts in the lavatory because you can start the craft when you're setting up your kit and then switch over to a new one before going into a raid. Another important thing is to save your longer crafts for when you log off at night. This lets you continually craft during the day and then get rid of your longer crafts at night. Another tip to make money on the flea is to craft as many wires as possible. There's a cyclical craft in the workbench where you craft 8 wires with 2 power cords. After that, you can craft 2 power cords with 2 wires, 2 T-plugs, and blue tape. Doing this allows you to level your crafting skill, get wires for your hideout, and gives you extra wires to sell on the flea market. Because wires are a pivotal part of early wipe progression, they tend to sell for an astronomical price on the flea. Other items that players will need in high quantities are light bulbs, energy saving lamps, and capacitors. My next tip is to go into raids with empty slots in your secure container. Doing this will allow you to progress even if you die. If you die without putting new items in your secure container, you're basically just wasting time. If you're able to fill your container with a few necessary items each raid, you'll slowly level your hideout even when you're on a losing streak. I typically will only put CMS kits in my secure container because they're not easily accessible with level 1 traders. Although it's harder to get at the beginning of a wipe, meds are much easier to replace than some item you probably won't see for another couple raids. A way to expand your secure container is by using cases. Docs cases are extremely valuable early wipe because it'll allow you to safely bring in keys as well as give you the option to safely bring out keys that you find in a raid. The easiest way to get a docs case is through a barter trade with therapist, but it requires some rare items like bronze lions. It's a tough decision whether or not to use found and raid bronze lions to get this docs case. This is because you'll need two found and raid bronze lions for a quest later down the road. Bronze lines aren't super easy to find, so it's really up to you. Another case you'll want as soon as possible is the scav junk box. Scav junk boxes are probably the single most important item to get at the beginning of a wipe. Scav boxes are absolutely massive and will help you expand the size of your stash. They're super important because you're probably going to be hoarding a lot of items for either quests or upgrading your hideout. So I honestly recommend getting your hands on two as fast as possible you're able to buy one of these boxes from Therapist Level 1 for around a million rubles. This seems absurdly expensive, especially at the beginning of a wipe, but I promise it's the best investment you'll ever make, especially if you have a standard account. Moving on from cases, it's important to focus on completing quests in order to level up. A lot of the early quests don't reward you with a ton of XP, so newer players typically ignore them. Completing quests is without a doubt the fastest way to progress in the game, so try knocking out as many as possible. Completing quests allows you to level both your PMC and Trader reputation, which is necessary to earn higher tier trade. Traders. Because practically everyone will be doing the same quests, most locations are going to be highly contested throughout the first week. This can both hurt and help you depending on your approach. So it's obviously a bad idea to W key your way into a 5 man trying to get their bronze pocket watch. Assess the potential danger of each quest before diving in and be prepared for anything. If you're really trying to get ahead of the curve, you can use these common quest locations to bait easy shooter kills. An example of this is camping the boat on shoreline in the hopes of picking someone off while they're planting their sniper. This is obviously a scumbag move, but hey, I guess you gotta do what you gotta do. Another good habit is trying to do multiple quests at the same time. For example, there's a string of shoreline quests that go to the same four-ish locations, so if you're able to knock them all out in one raid, that's gonna save you a ton of time. Another tip is to not compare yourself to others during early wipe. People are gonna be all over the place with their levels and quest progression, so just take it at your own pace. The wipe lasts for six months at least, so don't hold yourself up for weeks on end trying to get to the same point you were last wipe. I got to level 42 in like a month last wipe, but then I got bored and burnt out. If I dedicated my entire life to Tarkov, I could have probably hit Kappa, but instead I chose to play other games. So my count only ended at level 47. To be completely honest, I have pretty mixed emotions about this next wipe. None of the new changes really feel like there's going to be that big of an impact on the game as a whole. Sure, I get it, if you just started last wipe, this is going to be really interesting and really fun, and hell yeah, go for it. It's super fun learning how to do wipes, but for me, this is my fourth wipe, so I've already been through the motions. Since my first wipe, they've been claiming that Streets is coming next wipe. A year and a half has passed, and nothing's changed. And I was honestly late to the Tarkov party. There are people who've been playing for way more wipes than me who've been waiting for Streets for even longer. This really isn't me saying that, oh, Streets is going to make the game what I want it to be. Streets is what I've been waiting for this whole time. No, I personally am more excited to see things like map-to-map -map travel, having your stash be a physical location that you have to go to, and in-game traders. I'm excited about those things because that's going to change the core features of Tarkov. All Streets is is another map. Lighthouse came out last wipe, and people stopped going there once their quests dried up. I understand how daunting of a task it must be for the BSG team to fully create what Nikita wants from the game, and I think 
think they've done an outstanding job in the past. I've seen this game evolve so much in the short time that I've been playing, and I really can't wait to see the finished product. I personally am under the impression that Streets is probably going to get integrated into the game halfway through this wipe, but we'll see. Regardless, I'll be grinding just like everybody else. I'm probably going to take another crack at streaming, so watch out for that this weekend.